So my gas snowblower has been giving me a little bit of issues and I just decided to cave and buy a brand new Greenworks 80 volt electric two-stage snowblower. I'm very curious to see how well it performs because if it performs well, it'll be pretty much zero maintenance and just overall easier to deal with. You don't have to worry with cold starts and all that stuff. So I'm really curious and I'm already invested into the platform. I already have a lot of batteries because it works in a chainsaw and in the lawnmower. I also have an electric snow shovel and also a leaf blower. So I figured may as well try to an electric snow blower, see how well that works. So let's get to the garage and do an unboxing. So here we are in the garage. This is the box right behind me. Now there's not a lot of snow, so I won't be able to really test it today, but I do want to widen my driveway because the last time I did it manually, it didn't make it wide enough. So I might be able to do like one or two passes just to make it wider. So I will get to demonstrate it a little bit in this video, or I might just wait for snow and then add that on after. Here's a closer look at the box. And while I'm in here, this is the progress I've been doing on the garage. So I put two of the, the uh, ceiling joists. They're actually installed. Actually, I, forget, I still have to screw them on that end. I only screwed them on this end. And then I put all the joists up there. They're not screwed in yet. And obviously they're turned the other way. But just getting them up there was a pain in the butt. Just because there's so much stuff in here. Like I managed to do a bit of a cleanup, but like there's the ATV, so that takes up some space and then I got a lot of my tools here that I actually need and I have some lumber and stuff. I was able to do a pretty good cleanup in here to kind of open it up and then here's another look at the wall that I built. And that's where the fireplace used to be. So now that's a flat wall because I used to like stick out. So like every inch of space I can get in here is good. And I also got a new garage door and then I just put those temporary light fixtures for now because I used to have those uh, fluorescent fixtures. Anyway, let's get started with the unboxing. Okay, so as you can see, it comes in the pallet. Probably should have brought scissors here. in the world but they're never where you need them. that off without breaking the box but that didn't go so well. Looks like it comes with like a metal casing that's like pretty serious business here especially the price of metal. I almost wonder if I can return that somewhere for a deposit or something or maybe even like a scrap metal yard. That's the battery compartment I had that open a while ago. Looks like almost everything that counts is made out of metal. Like this part here, the auger, like this is made like a gas snowblower like even the impeller, all that part is metal. I'm not sure about the shoot, that's in a box, I'm gonna have to take that out. This is plastic, but that's pretty standard nowadays, I find for this stuff to be plastic, that's like the front controls. This is metal, like decently, like basically this looks like a pretty decent build, like it's, like I'm pretty impressed so far. So yeah, I'm gonna keep unboxing it and putting it together. Actually, there's an actual ratchet strap in here. I can actually use a ratchet strap. I was going to cut that, but I'm glad I didn't. I can actually use this. This is actually a ratchet strap. Interesting. This must be the charger.
Yeah, so this is a dual port charger, so the batteries just go right in. I already have several chargers, but this is a nice thing to have. Now it does take three batteries and it's only a dual port. So it's kind of odd, it's too bad it's not like three ports, but that's fine. I mean, I can use another charger and charge three batteries at a time. So this must be the shoot. Actually, I'll take the batteries off first. So these are most likely the batteries. Now these have been sitting here for a while, so they're gonna be cold. So I'm not gonna charge these. That's one thing some people get wrong with these batteries is you don't wanna charge them when it's cold. It's really bad on the batteries. Now, if they're designed well, they're probably gonna have like a safety guard to prevent that. But I'd rather not count on that. Oh, interesting. So these are about the same size as the uh, two amp hour batteries. So they must be using like bigger cells in here. Yeah, so this is a four amp hour battery and it looks about the same size as the two amp hours. So that's interesting. They're definitely heavier. Like I can definitely feel the weight. What's gonna be nice about having these extra batteries, they should fit perfectly in the chainsaw. So when I'm doing a logging and stuff, I'll be able to use these. So this is why I try to always stick with one platform because the batteries are interchangeable. So that's always nice. One more battery to go. Yeah, so all of this was about $2,000 before tax. So I don't remember what it came up to. I think it was like 2,200 and something. And it was on sale for $1,000 off. So to me, like, this is a pretty good deal because you're getting, like the batteries are loan. You're probably looking at like, probably like $900 at least in batteries. There's the batteries there and that's how they sit in the charger. Now I noticed that when I press it, I'm not getting any indication of a charge. So that's not really a good sign because usually you at least get like a flashing light if it's dead. But then this one, I get one light. So I don't know if it's because it's really, really dead or what. I mean, this is how they're shipped. So maybe it's normal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these in the house right away just so that they can warm up. Okay, so the batteries are in the house warming up. I'm a little bit worried about the indicator not lighting up, but hopefully that's normal. Maybe it just means they're dead. So I'm gonna let them warm up and then try to charge them after. Again, it's very cold. Like it's, I haven't checked the weather, but it feels like it's like minus 25 at least. I think it's not quite that cold, but that's what it feels like anyway. I think it's like minus 15 or something. This is a little tricky. Oh, I see, so it's connected to this. So, yeah, this is gonna be a little tricky. This garage is so small, it's hard to work in here. I'm just bumping into everything. Yeah, this is kind of awkward. Because I can't actually take that box out because there's a connector connected here. I think it just goes over here, so maybe I just need to connect that first. Maybe I should actually read the instructions. Nah, let's figure it out. Instructions are for noobs. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna brute force this. So this is the auger and it does look like it's metal. So that's good. Better look. So it's kind of like an open auger, but like this is metal. It's like a little rubber here. That's plastic. So all the parts that matter are metal. Like this is actually built decently. This is like, I would say this is on par with like a gas noble or as far as the build quality.
Now this is the part where I should probably read the instructions, but I'm pretty sure I know where this goes. I can't even feel my hands. To me, this is just gonna drop right in. Nice, so I may as well get this plastic off. I'm pretty much just winging it here. So now I think what's going to happen is it's going to slide here and I just have to tighten these in. Okay, this is starting to make sense. This is gonna slide here. Okay, this is actually awkward. I need like a way to hold this here. Starting to look like a snowblower. Not too sure where this goes. I might have to look at the instructions. Like so you're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket for this part. It's the uh, shoot control, and you need to remove these bolts. Okay, so it turns out there's an Allen wrench inside the battery compartment. So you need to unscrew that part under there, which I don't think is actually showing on my camera. It's right over here, and you can pass this through, and then you'll need a 10 millimeter to put this back here. So I'm just gonna do the rest on ca off camera just to get this going, and then I'll be back. pull and then you turn and that's how you lock the chute. So the reason it was locked it was because there's a mechanism here. This over here. So when you pull on that it actually pulls on the cable and that's actually what locks it in place. So, so this is normal. 
instructions. I didn't really do a good job explaining that, but I kind of figured it out on my own. So yeah, so to use it, you just pull and then you turn and then the shoot will go. And then this controls how far it shoots. And then what's nice about this is that you can actually control the throttle speed of the auger, which with the gas ones, some of the higher ends, some of the higher end ones you can do that, but a lot of them you can't. So this will let me kind of control where I shoot the snow. So this is kind of nice. And of course, if you put on eco mode, I'm gonna have more runtime. That does a start. So I, I'm gonna get this out of the crate. I think I just need to unbolt this. I might even keep this metal because I might even use it for a project at some point. Like that's a lot of metal. Like I'm surprised they use metal for that, not wood. I guess wood is also expensive now, so can't get away from inflation nowadays. But yeah, I'm surprised they use metal. Like it, it's a good sign. Like it means they care about the shipping. Like it's sitting there, so it can't easily move in shipping. So they did a good job of this. So I'm gonna get that off, and then we'll fire it up. This is how you control the direction of the shoot. And then this is how you control the height. This is the auger control, this is to drive. And then that's the throttle control for the auger. This is the throttle control for the drive and then the reverse to go all the way back. There's also a neutral, but I never really use that. This is how you start it. And then that's the throttle again. And then this is how you drive it. If it's been sitting still, you still have to hit the power button first and then the drive handle. But if you have the auger engaged, you know how to do that.
right, so here's a closer look at the batteries that it comes with. It's the uh, 4 amp hour 80 volt batteries. What's interesting with these batteries is that they're the same physical size as the uh, 2 amp hour batteries, except they're a little bit heavier. But what's nice is that these will fit nicely in the uh, chainsaw. So when I use this in the chainsaw, it'll be a little bit heavier, but it will be usable. And it'll basically give me double the runtime with the chainsaw. And I have three of them that came with it. So when I'm in the bush working on my off grid property, these are going to go pretty far. I already have several of the two amp hour batteries. So between all the batteries at the same time, with one on the charger while I'm using the chainsaw, I'm always going to have battery power to go. I think I'm going to get tired before all the batteries are dead. To compare, this is a five amp hour battery. This came with a lawnmower and it's much heavier than the two other ones. Now, if I really wanted good runtime on the snowblower, I could put three of these in the snowblower. They do fit. And I have a feeling that they're gonna come up with some higher end batteries because the fact that they were able to put the four amp hour batteries in the same size as a two, I have a feeling that something this size, they can probably get away with like six, maybe even eight amp hours. Cause it all has to do with the cells that they put inside. They use, they use higher amp hour cells, right? So, but yeah, this is pretty heavy. I have used this in the chainsaw. If you're like just cutting like logs, like on the ground, it's not so bad. But if you're like up in a tree and stuff, it's it gets pretty hard on the arms. But I mean, a gas chainsaw is probably still heavier, so it's usable. So it's good to store the batteries indoors, but the snowblower itself will work in the cold. Like I have used it in like probably minus 30 and it, it does run, but you want to keep the batteries indoors. And also when I'm done using it, I usually touch the battery and if I feel that it's too cold, I'm not going to charge it right away. But if I use it with only one battery, which I don't really recommend, but you can do, even the two amp hour batteries, you can actually put just one in there and it will run but it will get pretty hot if you use it a lot. So I don't, wouldn't recommend doing that. The manual says to use two. So I usually try to use two unless I just want to do like a quick pass. So in conclusion, I have to say I'm pretty happy with the machine. It performs pretty much the same way as my gas snowblower that I had before. I had an Arians 24 inch, and this is also a 24 inch. And I would say that it's pretty much comparable with a gas one. Now like a bigger gas one, like a 32 inch with a bigger motor, it's probably gonna outperform this, but as far as like head to head, you know, 24 inch with the standard size motor, I'd say it compares. I haven't really tested it against a real snowfall where we have like, you know, like this much snow, like where it's actually going like above the auger. Like I haven't seen a snowstorm like that yet. We haven't really had much snow here. We had like a little storm in early December-ish and pretty much all the snow we have on the ground right now is from that one storm. And then it was warm, so a lot of it had been melted. There's all like these different layers of ice. So in some of the videos, you'll see that it was struggling a little bit. And that's because it was trying to break through the ice and the wheels were spinning. Now the nice thing with electric is, as you've probably noticed from the videos, it's very quiet. Like I was trying to regulate the sound in my video editing so that you can hear it better. So like when I was further at the driveway, like I was increasing the sound. But basically it's very quiet. Like I was actually snowblowing my driveway and my neighbor was doing his with his gas snowblower. And then after that, he told me that he couldn't even hear me. Like he was actually pretty impressed with the machine when he saw it. So it shows how quiet it is, which is nice because I work shift work. So sometimes I might have to do my driveway at like seven o'clock in the morning or even before. Now, as far as runtime, it's kind of hard to measure that. I haven't really done any real like scientific testing Pretty much I would pop two batteries in. Sometimes they were not even fully charged and I would do the job and it was fine. But we, again, we didn't have a lot of snow so I wasn't really pushing it that far. But so far I haven't been in a situation where I run out of battery like halfway through the job. Like at one point we got, I don't know, maybe like this much snow, like decent amount but nothing that crazy. So I ended up doing my driveway and my neighbor's driveway and I still had charge left. So I think even for a really big snowfall, if I put all three batteries in and I charge them ahead of time, I think I won't have a problem. I don't think it'll be an issue at all. So I'm not too worried about the runtime. And I mean, even if like, say you had a really big driveway, like a 10 car driveway or like something ridiculous like that, worst case scenario, if you run out of power, you just go in the house, you 
put the batteries in the charger, you get more batteries, you put it in, you're good to go. Like the time it would take you to do that is probably about the time it would take you to put gas in the gas one. So, so that is one thing to consider with battery tools is as long as you have a couple batteries, you're usually good to go. Yeah, so I think I pretty much covered everything I wanted to. So this is going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoy that. This ended up being way longer than I thought. It's like over half an hour now. But yeah, so this is it for this video. Have a good one. Bye. Was this recording?